So here's an old circuit board. It's got some LEDs on it. It's got some switches on it, uh, which almost certainly means this was some sort of user interface. And uh, there's, of course, an integrated circuit. If we zoom in, uh, no surprise, uh, PIC 16F636. Um, PIC Micro has absolutely dominated this sort of uh, small uh, computing uh, task. So let's uh, take this part off the board, uh, put it in some acid, and de-encapsulate that package so we can take a look at the silicon die that lies beneath. Well, okay, here's the actual die photograph. I removed the packaging. Now to sort down what we're looking at, let's just switch back to a live view here. I've printed off the actual die photograph and then the block diagram for this PIC micro because it's very helpful in trying to sort down what we're looking at. Uh, the first thing to look for is very regular structures. These will have to be some sort of memories uh, of some sort. And uh, let's go to the block diagram to figure out which one's which. Now the PIC micro is quite interesting. It has a 14-bit instruction word, which is quite an unusual number. And you can see a pattern of 14 here and a 14 there, which strongly indicates this is the program ROM. Uh, now, program ROM gets a program counter, and it looks like it sits right here. So, really interesting, right? So the reset, uh, the process re gets reset, this address counter gets kicked uh, to usually to zero, and basically then it, that's the first instruction. It gets read out here and pushed out into these registers here. And then what happens with the processor, of course, is they, that uses it to uh, decide what to do next, you know, whether to increment the program counter, what kind of math to do. Uh, so we, we basically see how the processor gets laid out. Program counter here, comes pushes out some data, then the steering logic decides what to do next. It also causes the program counter to be set to its next uh, instruction, or it's the loop to come back, of course. So almost certainly the program. And uh, of course, now we see the basic building blocks of a microprocessor. That leaves two blocks here. Uh, now, this processor has a fairly small amount of RAM, 128 bytes, pretty typical of a microcontroller. And it also has an EEPROM, 256 bytes of EEPROM. Now, RAM cells have to be bigger, just that's the nature of how they're designed. So that means that this bigger block here uh, is almost certainly the RAM, and then this would make this uh, the EEPROM over here. Well, what next? Let's figure out uh, what the pads are. You can see this is the actual packaging. Power is quite unusual in this one. The power is on pin 1 and 14, that was on like 7 and 14 with like TTL logic. But power is up here, and uh, this is actually kind of handy because we go back to the diagram, and the pads are here. The blocks are here, around here. There's two in the center, and there's a series on the side here. That means almost certainly this will be the power input to the chip, and then the uh, the peripherals, the IOs, basically run down the sides of the chip on, on either side of the actual die. Now here is basically the peripherals of the uh, circuit, I suspect. Something really interesting, let's zoom in here. I'll insert at this picture here and we can see what's going on. Uh, there's basically a lot of metal uh, in the chip, of course, and it's obscuring a lot of the details. You see some peaking below. And of course, you may ask yourself, well, what, why are they actually doing that? And one thing they do have to do is something called security. There's basically the ability to lock down this program so you can't read it. I think there's also a cryptographic module in this particular uh, um, micro as well. And uh, you have to protect those with some metal, so otherwise what you do is you just shine some uh, uh, ultraviolet light onto the gate, and they can reset it, and then of course you can read out the cryptographic key or read out the program. So the next thing you would have to do, of course, is strip the metal from this uh, die here if you want to see the polysilicon and uh, want to go down a bit further into uh, investigating what the chip is. But this is very typical. This is a, a micro from about 2005, about 15 years ago. And uh, you get a real, real sense of how a processor works by just looking at the blocks and the flow of the gates. So, kind of neat.